All right, everybody. Good afternoon. Doc Severson here with you from Ready, Set, Crypto. Welcome to Ready, Set, Live. This is our live channel here on YouTube where we will come to you on an, on occasion with some information. How's everybody doing out there? Love to find out where you guys are dialing in from here today. What, uh, where are we coming in from today? So we are coming to you from beautiful Westerville, Ohio, right smack dab in the center of the U.S., sort of. What we're going to be talking about today is, okay, so we got South Carolina, we got Chicago, we got Australia, we got Denmark, we got Fort Lauderdale, we have Ireland, Italy, Texas, Somalia, Maine, Scottsdale, hey Nick, Netherlands, Belgium, Nigeria, Estonia, London, Australia, Austria, DC, Germany, all over the world today. So if I say today, understand that it could be tonight or it could be tomorrow morning. So we got Bulgaria, England, London, Marietta, Georgia, Spain, Cape Town, Canada, Dutchland, Hungary, Barcelona. Okay, welcome aboard everybody. Today, I'm going to be talking about charting like a pro, four powerful rules for crypto trading. Now, I'm not going to be recommending anything today. Please trade only with risk capital that you can afford to lose. Treat this as a business, right? Seek an edge before you invest or you will trade along with the rest of the investing herd that loses money. We don't want you guys to do that. Don't do that, okay? So a special welcome to any of our premium members who are attending today. So today my goal is to share some guidance on how to secure maximum accuracy with your charting and I'll reveal four powerful rules that will change how you look at charts and will simplify your approach. I've got about 45 minutes. Uh, usually this takes about 45 minutes to get through and then I will answer your questions. So please do me a favor hold your questions until the Q&A period, okay? Because what happens is I love to answer questions, I love to help people, and we'll, and I stop doing, you know, I start to answer people's questions and I stop the presentation and it angers everyone else that is not asking the question. So it slows everything down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna motor through this as fast as I can. We'll get to the end and then I'll take your questions, okay? So I, I can't comment on any portfolios today. So there's going to be a lot of people saying, hey, what about this coin or that coin or anything like that? Can't do that. Otherwise, the SEC is going to come along, knock on the door and put me in the pokey. Today's topic is about charting and price analysis. There is no one way to do this for everyone. However, the basics always apply. Keep in mind our... Please keep an open mind if my techniques differ from yours. There's room for everyone here. So who am I? Well, I'm not that young fellow with a big voice that says brain on blockchain. Okay, I'm the other guy. I'm the older guy. So I'm a husband, father of three, student pilot, former product manager, engineer. I'm that guy that quit his job to trade full time. So I did that, oh, about uh, 13 years ago now. So I've been trading options, futures, t uh, technical analysis, crypto, neuro-linguistic programming, which means trading mindset. And I've been a coach of that stuff since 2005. So I've been around the block a little bit here. I like to think of myself as a little bit of an in innovator when it comes to educating people on how to trade because really we keep doing the same things again and again and again. And it's sort of my job is to find a different way to explain something that resonates with you. So I've been trading for about 22 years. I've made every possible mistake that you can ever think of. So I beat you to the punch. I've also got a book out there, author of Hacking the Holy Grail, book on Amazon. Everybody's looking for the Holy Grail. And what I do is I talk about that. And the Holy Grail is not exactly what you think it is. It's not some chart study or special coin. It's up here. So that's what the book is about. So what is the problem that we're trying to solve today? What is the problem that we're trying to solve today? Accurate charting and trade analysis, I think, is paramount. 
in today's crypto market. We're getting a lot of crap that's out there. There's a lot of junk, TA and crap and opinion that's out there and we need to sift through that to come up with what's actual. So let's get to that. So we'd all like to know where our favorite coin in crypto is trending and when would be a good time to get into it, right? So let's rewind here for a second. How are most people doing their analysis right now? And so I'm gonna walk you through a little bit of a progression here on how I see people getting into crypto and forming their own opinions on this. So everybody in my mind starts in pretty much the same manner. So humans are herd animals. We feel safety in a crowd. This is why going to sporting events is so much fun, right? Because we're there with 90,000 of our closest friends. We're all cheering for the same thing. We're all hoping for the same thing to happen. And this is the one time where it's really okay to be part of a crowd because you can all pull in the same direction and all work together on something. But it doesn't work that way with financial markets, guys. So we hear people yelling about a specific investment and we feel compelled to join in. I would bet you that there's gonna be people in the chat room right now that are gonna be pumping coins. So if you're pumping a coin in the chat room, stop because I'm about to talk about you. So we we see people pumping coins in chat rooms or Twitter, Facebook, whatever, and we feel compelled to join in, all right? We want to be part of something that's happening. We, we want to be part of that crowd. So with social media and the internet, there's no shortage of sources for your attention. So where do I begin? Let's start with Twitter. In a site filled with anonymous individuals with handles and usernames all screaming out for attention, some of these posts can be impossible to ignore. So the odds are we'll probably see some of these in the comment section today. So there we go. Yeah, I knew it. So here's one that I picked off the other day. I invested $10,000 into Bitcoin and I made 15 grand in just 10 days. Now, if you're new to investing, you read something like that and it's going to open your eyes. You're going to say, wow, I wish I could do that too. Never mind how much of their account that they plopped into one coin that's trading at six Satoshis, right? <laughs> All right. So, I mean, but if you're if you're not sophisticated, if you're if you're new to crypto and the markets, you're going to look at something like that and say, "Wow, that's cool. I'd like to do that too." It's very compelling. Now, here's the other thing that I see a lot of, and I want to warn you guys about this because this is really a cancer in just about every financial market. It's called a pump and dump. So, what happens is somebody posts out here and says, "Hey, get on Cryptopia and at this time on this date, we're going to announce something that we're going to pump. And so what happens is everybody shows up and waits and waits and waits and logs on to their online broker. And then all of a sudden, boom, they drop the ticker of a coin and everybody jumps in and it pumps it up to here. Right. So it's very, very common to see something like that. What happens, though, is that everybody has been, these guys got in over here, didn't they? They got in over here and everybody buying in, it moves so quickly that they're probably buying in up here. Now, the guys that are, that have already bought in, that ran the room are selling into the spike. That's why it's called a dump. So they're selling into the spike. They're providing the supply that you're buying and it's going to run right back down. It's going to normalize like this. So this is why pump and dumps, unless you're part of the original pumpers, are generally not going to work for you. Okay? So this is what we're going to see. This is what we're going to see. These are some of the ways that people think that they're getting edge in the markets and they're not. They're chasing after things. So if you're new to investing or crypto in general, it can be very difficult to ignore these posts with their promises of easy money. Unfortunately, there's a reason why they're telling about their wins and not their losses. They need you to help them get rich. You're just a pawn in the game. But you know how this works out, right? 
Here's a typical situation. We had Ripple just the other day. A lot of people in the chat room pumping Ripple already today. So a lot of people making noise about Ripple. And by the time that the average investor got involved in this, it was already way, way up here. And so this is where they think, oh, man, this thing's going to the moon. I'm going to love this. And then it immediately comes back down. Supply and demand will always normalize. Guys, don't chase after anything. Wait for the trade to come back to you. So business as usual, you chase the coin and usually you will book a loss. And that didn't work out too well. So this is where people generally get to the point of saying, well, look, this social media thing, this just isn't working. There's just so much noise that's out there. There's so many people that have all got their own individual agendas and it's not working out for me. Nobody's looking out for me in social media, which is the case. So you think, well, let's go to the grownups in the room. Let's go to the financial press. Let's go to these folks that their job is to report on crypto and financial goings on, right? They're going to be looking out for me, right? So let's try the financial media for guidance. Well, so here's some recent headlines that I saw. Bitcoin jumps 6730 with bulls charging. Experts forecast a massive breakout. Now think about this for a second. If you're new to investing in crypto, if somebody in the financial press, which you hold in high esteem, is telling you that there's going to be a massive breakout, what's your first reaction going to be? My God, I've got to get into, I, I, I can't miss the boat on this. You got to get in right now, right? Because we tend to elevate these positions. People in the financial press, you know, we're used to thinking of them as well. They must know more than I do. That's why they're in the financial press. Guys, what is their job? What is the most important thing to the financial press? It's clicks, right? It's eyeballs on their site. They're trying to sell ad space. So what they try to do is they're going to set up a thumbnail like this with a very compelling title and get you to click on their, their ad. They don't particularly care. Now, who are these experts? Who anointed them an expert? Who knows? But the financial press can label anyone an expert. Here's another example. So Mike Novogratz sets a $10,000 price target for Bitcoin in 2018. Okay, that's reasonable. But this guy is a billionaire with a B. It's going to be difficult to ignore somebody, right? If you're new to crypto, it's going to be difficult to ignore somebody that's probably acquired more assets in their life than, than you ever will. I mean, it's no surprise, right? So again, if you're new to this, you're going to say, wow, a billionaire is setting a price target of $10,000. I better get on board right now. Okay, it doesn't work that way. Again, what probably happened is somebody from this site just thrust a microphone in his face and said, hey, Mike, what do you think as far as the end of year targets? Ah, uh, probably 10,000. All of a sudden becomes a headline. A billionaire issues a price target. That's not the way this works. That is not how you do objective analysis in this market. Here's another one. Okay, so the CEO of Binance, Shang Peng Zhao posts a little cute little tweet of something going to the moon, right? So all of a sudden, the financial press pick up on this and they say, experts call out a massive price forecast going to the moon. Is that news? Really? Seriously? You don't think this guy is the CEO of the largest exchange in the world. What does he want? He wants everybody to think that everything's going to go to the moon so that he can get the activity off of there. Of course, right? He's talking his own book here. But again, if you're not sophisticated, if you're new to markets, you're going to look at this and say, well, wait a minute. Okay, logic dictates that if this guy, and this guy is the biggest exchange in the world, he thinks it's going to the moon, so therefore I better get on board. So it's really hard not to be biased by something like this. And it's really hard not to get abused if you're a newer investor. And if you're thinking that this is objective analysis for your crypto, that's not the way to do it, guys. So headlines and print and visuals are extremely powerful and we want to follow. In fact, it's a little known fact that most of you that are on board today, most of your investing education came through television commercials. Yeah, that's right. Where else are you going to learn? You're not going to learn it from primary school. 
high school, anything like that. You don't learn anything like that. They don't even teach you how to balance a checkbook, much less teach you how to invest. So you're getting most of your education on how things are done through TV commercials. So following the crowd will burn you nearly every time. Don't follow the crowd, guys. So most people, this gets old in a hurry. And hopefully before too long, you, you learn to stop looking for crowdsourced investing ideas. Don't do investing ideas through crowdsourcing. It does not work. The herd will get faded. So if you're sick of social media influencers working their own magic on you, to your, you're just a pawn with that, and then you go to the financial press and that's not working out either, eventually you find your way into charting, and especially with crypto. So there's some forms of there's some forms of investing out there where they don't even use charts. Like the options trader that trade the equities markets do not use charts at all. They just do everything through statistical analysis of the option chains. So it's a very different way to do it. But crypto, we don't have enough derivatives out there to be able to get any kind of forward-looking volatility. Yet derivative doesn't count. So we use charts for price discovery. So many of you here today have already made this leap to independent thought and objectivity. Congratulations. It's not that easy though, is it? This isn't taught in grade school, so investors need to learn this black art from somewhere, right? So it's, it's all this sort of like, well, everybody knows that you need to use this indicator. Right, so the problem is that there's so many experts trying to adapt their stock or Forex system to the crypto markets that they get it all wrong. Here's an example of this. So if we look at just the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and if we take a back sample of this and forward project volatility, going forward, we see that there's a plus minus 7.2% annualized forward volatility of this. So what this means is that a year from now, within one standard deviation, the price of the Dow Jones is going to be anywhere from plus to minus 7%. So a 14 percentage point swing that's in there. You may look at that and say, well, wow, that's a lot, but not really. That's actually fairly quiet when it comes to volatility. Now let's compare this to crypto. I've done the same thing with crypto the other day and just taking a small back sample here of actually what is very mild volatility for crypto. Right, so for Bitcoin, this is actually mild volatility compared to what we were dealing with back here. But even this is, just based on this sample here, the forward volatility annualized is plus minus 38%. So we have a 76 percentage point swing push forward on Bitcoin. So it's within one standard deviation, it's either gonna be plus 38%, or minus 38% or some value inside of that, that probability cone. That's a huge difference. So these are different markets. We have different volatility. It's in different character state right now. Crypto's in a bear market, so we're gonna have less linear price action, yet they're still using the same tools that they've been using for stock and Forex for decades. Doesn't work. So here's what happens, and this is what I see happen to people is that they they start out with a certain set of indicators on their chart. And if they can't get the results that they're looking for, let's add just one more. Let's add one more indicator. Hey, I heard about this really cool indicator called the Arun or the DMI or this indicator or that indicator, Andrew's pitchfork, whatever you want, right? So what happens is they add just one more, just one more indicator. And that will be the one that puts me over the top. So we'll start off with a price and volume chart. Price and volume chart. Hey, welcome aboard folks. If you're just joining me here today, we're talking about the four powerful rules. And what I'm doing is kind of going over a little bit of a backstory to kind of walk you through how just about everybody gets into crypto and starts doing trade discovery and analysis. And this is kind of stage three. By the time you get to charts, you've, you've kind of been burned out on this whole social media thing and crowdsourced crowdsource trade ideas. So now we're getting into thinking for yourself. So how do you think for yourself? Well, again, this is how people do it. Now, no, what happens is if you just sit there with a price and volume chart, you're gonna take abuse from people that says, how 
dare you put on a chart without the moving averages. So, well, I better do that. Otherwise, I don't want to get castigated here by these experts. And I've got to put at least a 50 and a 200 day moving average on here. How dare you not put a chart on with a MACD? Well, here we go. We have the MACD, which is the moving average convergence divergence indicator. We have the histogram and the two line that's on here. Okay, we got moving averages in the MACD. How can we even think about putting a chart on without the stochastics? Of course, here we go, plus K, percent K, percent D. We have stochastics on here. We have our standard oscillators. We have momentum tools. We have moving averages on here. But that's still not getting us a performance that we want. Why? Because the market doesn't work the same as the one that was designed. So what we have to do is we keep adding just one more indicator. Let's add the Bollinger Bands on here so we have a sense of volatility for this plus minus two standard deviations from a moving average. Okay, so that's giving us a sense of volatility around this, kind of looks like a snake now. But that's not doing it for us, so what we do is we add just one more indicator. Let's add the RSI, let's add Wells Wilder's Relative Strength Index with a period of 14 because, well, because everybody says to put it on there. So now we're still not getting the performance that we want because so we add just one more, the Arun oscillator, which is, nobody knows what it is, but it looks cool and it appears to give good signals. And that doesn't do it for us. So we add just one more because somebody told us that a squeeze is equating to the Bollinger Bands being inside the Keltner channels, which occurs right before this, the price is gonna take a big pop. Okay, but that doesn't happen very often. So we need just one more so we add the Directional Momentum Index, or DMI, also known as the ADX, or Average Directional Index, at the bottom here, with a, a DI plus and DI minus. Okay, guess what? We're still not where we are. And what have we done to the price? We've relegated the price to this squished up little, you know, biscuit roll up at the top of the chart that we can barely read anymore. So we've taken the most important thing that's on this chart, which is the price and volume, and we've relegated it to secondary status, not even secondary, right? So adding more indicators does not provide more clarity, guys. And don't fall into this trap because just about everybody that, that deals with charts is always looking for the holy grail indicator and is adding just one more and you will do so at your own peril because you're gonna obscure the one thing that's on the chart which is the most important, which is the price. So it usually produces the opposite effects. Yeah, yeah, add, let's add fibs to it as well too. Okay, so you've twisted yourself into a pretzel, you've created so much noise and so many different signals on your chart that you are, there's indecision. You can't decide what to do. So here's what I propose is that Let's get rid of the crap. Let's go old school and let's do our analysis the right way. So what about just using price? What about, well, it's not as pretty, right? So, but it's never lagging. That's the thing is all of these indicators that you've added to your chart are all derivatives. They're all derivative of price and volume. So therefore they're lagging, which means it takes several candles to produce an actual actionable signal. So it's not based on some derivative study written by, you know, 50 years ago by some dude that you've never heard of, like Gerald Appel uh, writing the MACD, right? So indicators lie all the time. You'll get false readings off of indicators all the time because the price is in the process of reversing. But price never lies. Price is the ultimate arbiter of value. So price does reflect everything that is currently known about the asset this very second. Please do not trade off of the news. The news is usually lagging. That rumor has already been priced into the chart weeks ago, more than likely. So I know what you're going to say. I've heard all the objections, but Doc, it's really hard to learn how to read price. It's really scary. Well, no, it's not that bad at all. It's just that you tried it when you first started learning about charts, and now perhaps it's time to go back to put more of a focus on price itself. 
So you can either keep doing the same thing and hoping for different results. Yeah, I should have put the uh, Ichimoku cloud up there. Talk about an overblown. People get religious about the Ichimoku cloud. It's just a series of moving averages, convergence and divergence on there. There's nothing else besides that. So again, keep doing the same thing, hope for different results, or you can change the equation. So I've got three things that are written on my desk here from, if any of you know a guy by the name of Tim Ferriss, Tim Ferriss is a world-class deconstructor of things that will force you to reevaluate your paradigms. And anytime I run into situations where it's just not working for me, I'll ask myself these three questions from Tim. What if I did the opposite? What if I did the opposite instead of the thing that's just killing me? Number two, what if I could only subtract to solve the problem? So instead of adding something to solve the problem, what if I could only subtract from the current situation to solve the problem? Okay, think about that next time. And then here's number three, what would this look like if it were easy? So I think all of us have this sort of notion that it has to be hard, right? Everything has to be difficult because that's just the way it is. It has to be difficult. What would this look like if it were easy? And so those three questions have driven my analysis for years now. So we can learn this the right way. The market does not care about your excuses. So how about we start right now? Now, you won't believe how simple these rules are. So I'm gonna go over the four rules now, but your mindset will fight you. It will say, it can't be that simple, it's supposed to be hard. And so you'll find a way to complicate this thing. You'll, you'll say, but, 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 but what about, what about the, when this happens? Simplify things, right? Accept this. So if you have the mind rights, right mindset for success, you can apply these rules tomorrow and start making a huge difference of your own. So rule number one, rule number one is that larger time frames dominate the overall trend. And you might have heard me talk about this over the last couple of months because I've been trying to kind of like seed my discussions that I've had in our channel or through the premium newsletter that we do with, hey, this is rule number one, this is rule number two, this is rule number three, those kind of things. So perhaps this is, this is sinking in for some of you, but larger time frames dominate the overall trend. Okay, so you're saying, what on earth does that mean? So what I see is that everybody that's focused in on what is called the signal chart, and for most people, the signal chart is the daily chart, you're getting caught up in the minute by minute movement of the markets. You're living and dying with each slight minute, you know, five minute bar that goes up or down. Oh no, oh, there it goes again. And you're losing perspective. You're losing the forest for the trees in here. But people that do that have no perspective since they're not following the larger time frame swings and trends. These are much more powerful than individual hourly or daily candles in the same way that the ocean current is stronger than individual waves. So what I see is that everybody, now would you agree that this is a weekly downtrend in Bitcoin? And so what do I see? Everybody, every time there's a rally, this is gonna be the one. This is gonna be the one. This is it, this is the one. This is the one, this is the one, here it is. This is the one that's gonna rescue us from the pits of despair. But guys, it's a longer time frame weekly downtrend. We should expect to see the reversals fail to the downside. This is the perspective that a larger time frame can give you. Let me illustrate this with an analogy. I love to do analogies, sometimes maybe a little bit too much, but let's think about walking your dog. If you're gonna walk your dog from point A to point B, welcome aboard folks. If you're just joining me, we are going over the four rules, the four powerful rules for trading crypto right now. We're going over the very first one. So if you're walking from point A to point B, let's say you, and this is where I go into the difference between men and women because a man will be mission oriented. My God, I've got to get to point B. I'm going from point A to point B and this is what we're going to do and we're not going to deviate from that course. Where a woman will be a little bit more open to things that happen. Oh, I just decided to stop off in the middle of this, right? So big difference is there, but I'm, so I'm giving you the guy's perspective here. If I walk my dog from point A to point B, 
It's going to happen. And mission accomplished, right? I get to point B. But that's, that's my path. Now, what's the path going to be of my dog? I am 10 times the mass of my dog. Who's going to win that directional argument? So what's going to happen is my dog, and this is what they do. They sniff and they explore and they use their nose and they're going to be all over the place, right? That's why their leash is on there. They get to explore, they get to mark their territory, they get to do what dogs do. Now, here's the question. Does the dog show up at point B in the same place that I do? Yes, they do, right? Makes sense, right? The dog eventually gets from point A to point B. I take a more direct path. The dog is the smaller time frame. So here's the larger time frame, here's the smaller time frame. They both show up in the same place, the same destination but I'm 10 times the mass of the dog. I'm going to win, right? I don't have a Great Dane. In this case, a <laughs> smaller dog, I'm going to win. I put the probabilities in my favor, right? So your dog can orbit around you, but it will always follow the larger time frame lead. So think about that as it relates to charts and trends. The larger time frame will always set the direction of what's going on, and it takes a lot to turn around a larger time frame trend. It's like an aircraft carrier steaming at flank speed in the Pacific, you know, doing what, 35 knots or something like that. All of a sudden you go, man overboard. You can't just stop that thing in the middle of the Pacific and just do a three point turn. It's gonna take about a mile to do a full Williamson turn and come back and rescue that sailor. It takes a while for a larger time frame to reverse, but it doesn't take that much for a smaller time frame. So, rule number one again, larger time frames dominate the trend. And you're losing that perspective if you're not using this rule. So how do we apply this? Understand what larger time frames to add to your signal chart to create an anchor chart. So we have an anchor chart, which is the larger time frame. That's the anchor. That's the human being walking the dog. And then there's the signal chart, which is the the smaller time frame chart, which you're going to take entries off of. Understand how to read the trend. So again, I understand that not everybody understands how to read a price trend. What does a price trend mean? Well, an uptrend is higher highs and higher lows, or a downtrend is lower highs and lower lows, right? So that's what trend and direction means. Trade in the direction of the anchor chart swing. Trade in the direction of swing, what I mean by a swing, this is a trend. Oops, let's go with a better color. This is a trend. Here is an uptrend, higher highs and higher lows. These are swings. Here's a swing up, here's a swing down. Here's a swing up, here's a swing down. Trade in the direction of the anchor chart swing. Larger time frames dominate the overall trend. That is rule number one. Now we know how to apply it. Let's go to rule number two. And again, I'll take questions at the end of today's session. I can't stop and take questions because it will anger people. We don't want to anger anybody. Rule number two, reversals come from the inside out and they propagate higher. This is the exact converse of rule number one. It's the exact opposite of that. So we never see reversals on the signal chart if we're just watching the larger time frame chart, do we? Because larger time frame charts really don't reverse very often. It takes a hell of a move to reverse an, an anchor chart. So just like how one virus infects a single host cell, so you get, you get infected with a flu, one, one virus will do it. It infects a host cell, then that multiplies, and all of those viruses infect their own host cells, and then it just goes geometrically explosion until your immune system is overwhelmed. That's the same thing. So you don't get sick off of one virus, it's the effects and the downstream multiplication of one virus as it propagates through your system. This is what happens with smaller time frames. So let me give you an example of this. Here is a short-term reversal of a downtrend. This is the daily chart, okay? So we have a downtrend here. This is a downtrend. We start from a higher high, lower low, lower high, lower low. We have a downtrend in place now Something happens to reverse this back up to an uptrend, doesn't it? It goes back up to an uptrend. Okay, so we see this move into an uptrend, but we can't, 
this is what happens to you on the daily chart. If you're using your daily chart only to look at charts, then all of a sudden you get one really big noisy day there. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, you look up and it's reversed. And when did that happen? Oops, there it was. But if we use a smaller time frame chart, remember rule number two, reversals start from the inside out for smaller time frames. So this short term hourly chart, this was in a downtrend and then it reverses to an uptrend. Here's where it happens right here. So this is the downtrend, lower highs, lower low, lower high, lower low. There's a downtrend on the hourly chart. All of a sudden, boom, don't know what happened here with the noise, right? So some kind of news happened, prints a higher high. There's the beginning of the reversal. Right there is your first indication that the probabilities now favor an upside reversal because we've gone from a lower low to a higher high. That improves the probabilities that any drop in this point will produce a higher low. Kind of like what's happening on Ripple and Stellar right now. Okay, don't chase after the highs, wait for the pullback and the higher low, and now the uptrend has been established. But this all happened on the hourly chart, and you got a much more accurate read on this from the hourly chart. You couldn't really see what was going on on the daily chart because it's too broad. This is why we use different time frames. Rule number two, reversal start from the inside out. So change always happens from the inside out. You can get sick from one virus. If you lose a column on a building, it can bring down a whole building. If you drive the same car every day, you don't notice things have changed and degraded until somebody else drives it and said, what are you doing? The brakes are terrible. Oh, I didn't notice. I drive it every day and I don't notice the change, right? Change happens from the inside out. It can be very innocuous. Change happening at small levels are our early warning to possible failure or reversals. In our case, we care about trend reversals, don't we? So how do we apply rule number two? Understand what smaller time frames you're gonna use to add to your signal chart to help spot changes in trend faster. Understand how to read the trend. You have to understand how to read trends. Higher highs and higher lows is an uptrend. Lower highs and lower lows is a downtrend. It's actually very simple. It's called Dow Theory. It was written in the 1930s. Trade in the direction of the anchor chart swing until you see the signal chart reversing. Okay, hello folks, welcome aboard. If you're just joining us, we're going through rule number two and this will be archived so you can always catch up and um, catch up to us later here. So we're right on time. Reversals come from the inside out and they propagate higher. And what you can also do is you can, uh, you know, for those of you that are using TradingView, which is in my mind, kind of the 500 pound gorilla in the charting space in crypto because the big boys like eSignal and TradeStation, they just don't have the feeds right now to do crypto. And they will charge you an arm and a leg when they finally do get feeds for crypto. So TradingView is an excellent choice right now and perhaps into the future as well too. So even the free version is really not that bad. Okay, so TradingView, great resource for you guys. You can set this up with fractal timeframes on here. You can set up different fractal timeframes to provide your anchor signal and then sub signal charts. Okay, that's rule number two. Rule number three, and you won't believe how simple this is, and you'll be face palming that you didn't use this before, but descending patterns break to the downside and vice versa, or ascending patterns break to the, descending patterns break to the, I got this wrong guys, Descending patterns break to the upside and descending patterns break to the upside, ascending patterns break to the downside. So a small typo there. This one's pretty simple, but no one believes how well it works. So what goes up must come down. What I'm talking about here is an ascending pattern is something like this, right? An ascending pattern is like this and it will eventually break that trend line and start working to the downside. And then this creates a descending pattern, which will eventually break to the upside. This is how price moves. And we can start to see these on trend lines. In this case, this is a 60 minute chart on Bitcoin. Ascending pattern breaking to the downside. 
And then once this breaks to the downside, then it forms a descending pattern, which eventually breaks to the upside. And there we go. There's an ascending pattern now that we have. And it too will eventually break to the downside. And then this descending pattern will break to the upside. This is how markets move. Okay, so how do we apply rule number three? This works on every time frame. So the larger the time frame, the more powerful the break will be when it finally happens. That means that something like the weekly chart will take forever. For those of you that have noticed, the weekly chart has got this descending trend line on it, which has been happening since January, like this, right? So when that descending trend line breaks, we're gonna have ourselves one heck of a move aren't we? So the larger the time frame, the more significant the break. So it certainly is open to interpretation. Trend lines are very open to interpretation. It's as much of an art as it is a science. But what I will do is I will look for the greatest number of touches to apply that trend line. Eventually, there's going to be a no doubter break. You will have false breaks, but eventually you'll see a no doubter that will happen there. So ascending patterns break to the downside, descending patterns break to the upside, and it happens over and over again. That's rule number three. Pretty simple, isn't it? And then here's rule number four. So we're gonna wrap up with rule number four here. Range contraction leads to range expansion. Range expansion leads to range contraction. Repeat forever. I can almost guarantee you that you have never been taught this before, but this is how markets move. Okay, you got fed this whole lie of overbought and oversold over the years, but markets don't work that way. They run as far as they can until they hit exhaustion. And then they consolidate and then they repeat. So they run as far as they can until they hit exhaustion and then they will consolidate until they've recharged themselves. And then they'll continue running in that same direction until they hit exhaustion and recharge themselves. And perhaps they might even reverse because it runs into a larger time frame exhaustion. So range expansion moves to range contraction, moves to range expansion to contraction to expansion to contraction, back and forth forever. Think about this. Much of what I talk about and what I teach is based on what we see every day in nature, isn't it? I mean, it is. So are we just gonna sum it Mount Everest in one day, we're just going to run up the side of Mount Everest and summit that and one. Oh, it's only five miles up. It's only five miles up, six miles. So we should be able to run up that sucker in no time at all. Doesn't work that way. Doesn't work that way, of course. So what we have to do is we, we go as far as we can until we hit exhaustion. We go to camp number one. We consolidate. We build up our energy there. We acclimate ourselves to the altitude. Then we go as far as we can to camp two. And we slump into camp two, completely wrung out. We have to consolidate. We'll spend a few days there, acclimate, go to camp three, camp four, same thing. And finally, we're going to go and try to summit and not make ourselves a fixture on the side of the mountain, like so many have done. Okay, let's apply this to charts. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little known study called the CHOP index, choppiness index, which is part of TradingView. And I view this as a fuel gauge almost. This is almost like a fuel gauge. So think of this as full energy and think of this as empty. Full tank, empty tank. High level of energy, low level of energy. Okay, what we have is when we have consolidations like this, that builds up the energy. This is almost like a spring being wound up. Think of a spring being wound up tighter and tighter and tighter. You're building all that potential energy into that spring and you're gonna release it as kinetic energy. Remember that from physics, right? So let's identify these. High level of energy means that we're about to see a big movement. Which way is it gonna go? Price will tell us which way it's gonna go. Another high level of energy indicates that we have the potential for a big movement. Which way is it going to go? Price is going to tell us which way it's going to go. High level of energy, big movement follows that. Now we're going to go into low level of energy. Low level of energy means the price will more than likely consolidate. It's exhausted to the downside now. Here's another one. Low level of energy, it's exhausted to the upside. This is not overbought, oversold. 
This is not an oscillator. Another low level of energy means that this downtrend is momentarily out of gas and it's going to have to consolidate. It consolidates and then it starts to move in the opposite direction. Another low level of energy means that this downtrend is more than likely going to pause down here and consolidate. This is how markets move. Range expansion moves to range contraction and then it repeats. This is how markets move, guys. Using these principles will give us an early warning when a consolidating price chart is about to break out. So some of you know your chart patterns. Some of you know your chart patterns. When you see range expansion like this move into range contraction like this, I want to see this in the chat room. What is that called? What is that called? That is a chart pattern called what? And that builds up a, a tremendous amount of energy. And then typically we see a break in the direction from whence it came. All right, so yeah, there we go. Okay, so a lot of times you can see some of these principles actually come into play through chart patterns as well. So that is a bull flag for those of you that don't know. So as well as the converse, warning when a trending price chart is about to stall out and rest. So how do we apply rule number four? And admittedly, rule number four is probably something that you've never heard about before and said, whoa, well, that wasn't in the 1972 technical analysis book that I read. There we go. A lot of you are saying bull flags. Kudos. So this works on every time frame, but the larger the time frame, the more powerful the signal. A weekly exhaustion signal is going to be more powerful than a daily exhaustion signal, right? So I use the CHOP index linearity. So the CHOP index measures linearity of the trend. And it's going to tell me whether it's in exhaustion or it's fully charged. Think of that fuel gauge. Range expansion leads to range contraction and vice versa. Okay, guys, I will get to your questions in just a second here. We'll finish up. So let's do a recap on the four powerful rules. We looked at how crypto traders usually start making decisions, mostly with bad crowdsourced information, correct? And how they usually gravitate towards charts as price discovery is easier to read visually. We have to do that. But crypto is more intense than any other market that's out there. You can't just throw some 40 year old strategy and expect it to work the same way it did in 1975. Okay. We saw that larger time frames dominated the trend. That's rule number one. Rule number two is that reversals started from the smallest time frames or from the inside and then they propagated higher. Rule number three is that rising patterns eventually broke to the downside or the converse of that. And that range contraction was like a spring winding up leading to the release and range expansion. Range expansion would occur until exhaustion right? Range contraction leads to range expansion. Repeat, repeat, repeat. That is rule number four. So these four rules, they may seem simple and elementary, and I'm sure that that some of you might seem underwhelmed by them because it's like, Doc, is that it? Is that it? This has taken me the last two decades to fully accept these and internalize them. Remember what I talked about with Tim Ferriss. What would this look like if it were easy? So I think a lot of times we tend to overcomplicate things. We add too much noise. We add too much analysis. And we have so much bias that we have to overcome that we can't see what's actually happening with the price chart right in front of our very eyes. The price chart is trying desperately to tell us what it wants. But through our bias and through all this social media and, and everything else, all this noise that we're receiving is that we pull in, we look for things that agree with what we think we know. That's confirmation bias. So I'm sharing these with you today with the hope that you can apply them and make a difference if you apply them properly. So for those of you who want to take your crypto trading to the next level, I do have more to offer for those of you that are ready for this. So I do have a new class that's just coming out right now, which is called the Ready Set Crypto Fractal Energy Trading Masterclass. So fractal energy means we're using multiple timeframes 
separated by fractal time frames, and we're using energy to understand the energy behind each time frame. So the combination of those, when we put those puzzle pieces together, we can actually understand what's happening below the hood. We understand the larger time frame trends. We understand what would have to happen for the price to reverse. And we understand the energy and the potential of that time frame to move and how we put all this together. So I'm going to be in the instructor for this class. There's going to be over five hours of video content. And this is going to be delivered online. Now, here's the deal. On Monday, this is going to go up to 149 bucks, But it's on sale today for $79. Or if you're a premium newsletter subscriber, it's going to be $69. Using our coupon. The discount disappears this weekend. It goes up to $149. Starting Monday. I'm also doing a coaching masterclass. So this is optional. So you can take the class by itself. You can get in for $69.79, whichever one that you qualify for. And maybe you're good to go with that. But there's going to be people that want a little bit more. And this is really affordable. So getting a little bit more is going to be inexpensive for you. So I'm going to be doing four individual hour-long private group sessions. So this is where we get on a private chat, kind of like this and we walk through exercises, I take your questions, interact with you live, and it's gonna be a small private group. This is an add-on to the class. It cannot be bought separately, so you can't just buy the coaching sessions, you have to buy the class plus this, okay? I expect this to be very limited intended, so lots of personal attention. The discount disappears this weekend, don't miss it. Alumni, this is the cool thing, is that I'll probably be teaching this class, there's a lot of demand for this, so I've been teaching this for several years now in different markets. And it's really made a difference to a lot of people. It's cleaned up their charts. It's, a, it's given them a very good look under the hood of what's going on. And so I'll probably three months from now repeat this again. And then the alumni that sign up this weekend can attend that one as well too, for free. Right? You paid once, you're grandfathered in. So the Masterclass Plus, if you put the two together, the class and the coaching, 15 module course plus four private group coaching sessions. So on Monday, this is gonna be 298. Today, it's gonna to be 158 or with the coupon 148. That is inexpensive, folks. Discount disappears this weekend. This will cost 298 starting Monday. The dedicated serious investor that wants some edge and wants to quit messing around with, with, right, you know, all these, you know, social group casting and, you know, just crap TA that's out there is going to choose this package, right? Here's what we're going to cover. Number one, how to reprice trends on single time frames. So you got to learn how to reprice trends and reversals. How to put that together with multiple time frames. So how do you, you got two different charts doing different things. How do you understand the trends and how they fit those puzzle pieces together? Number three, how to combine rules number one and two together. Larger time frames dominate, reversals come within. This is usually one of the first questions I get. I've got these two charts and they're both saying something different. Which one wins here? I have the answer for you. Number four, how to determine entries on a chart using nothing but price. Get rid of all the studies. How can you enter something? How can you evaluate something just with price and volume? This is as pure and as fast as it gets. It doesn't get any better than this. Number five, understanding how price moves between range expansion and range contraction. Something that you need to learn to understand. Number six, evaluating energies on single and multiple time frames. Again, this is where you have different time frames, understanding the energies, fitting the puzzle pieces together for that, not so simple. But once you get it, you get it. Number seven, putting everything together with price and energy. This is what I call fractal energy trading. One study, that's it. That's all we need is one study. Risk management, directional trading signals. I, I teach this in every class that I do because I see the worst mistake that retail traders make. The worst mistake. And I'd be interested to hear uh, what's your thoughts on it, but to me, number one with a bullet is entering a position without identifying what your exit is. So we're going to work on risk management. Rule number two of risk management is 
risk no more than 2% on any one position. You can break up a position in several different chunks, but risk no more than 2% on any one position. So don't go all in. Don't back up the truck on something like that. That is not how it's done, guys. Number nine, market states and scanning for opportunities. There are different market states. Right now we're in what's called a trending and volatile market state, also known as a bear market. This is not a quiet and trending bull market. And I see so much crap TA out there from people that are saying they're using the same rules as a bull market and they're expecting the same results. It doesn't work that way, guys. So you have to understand your market states, understand how to scan for opportunities. What are you looking for in your charting package? And then number 10, this is again, something I do in every class. Understand how to journal. Understand how to improve your performance. What do you track? How do you get better at what you do? Let's assume that you wanna get 1% better at every day from something that you do. Imagine how good you'd be in a year from now. So we put that all together in the program summary, how to put it all together, how to become a professional trader. So you can get access to this today. This is what the actual um, class looks like. So for every module, we have a written material. So we have, in essence, an ebook, a module video, which is gonna be anywhere from typically eight minutes to 25 minutes or so. It's in full HD, as well as an online quiz you can take to see whether or not you understand the material or what you need to work on. So this is a fair amount. This is 15 modules of this. This is a fairly extensive course. And this is why I'm calling it a master class. Okay. So here's how you do this. Here's how you get signed up. ReadySetCrypto.com slash fractal. This is for the class only. Again, it's 79. Or if you have the coupon, if you're a premium subscriber, you can get it in for 69 today. Okay. So save 70 bucks. Don't spend, right? Here is the package with the coaching. This is readysetcrypto.com slash plus. So this is the course and the coaching for 158 or 148 if you have the coupon. Okay, so if you can't commit, if you're, if you're saying, well, this sounds great or I don't have the money, try our newsletter for free for a week. So get to know us get to see what we do. You can watch my videos every every night for a week and see how I analyze the markets. I use this stuff every night. So one week of our premium newsletter for free, normally 49 a month, comes out five times a week. Get in while we're still doing trade schools. So we're doing these trade schools. We'll do live videos kind of like this during the week with our premium subscribers. That will eventually become a separate service. But if you get in now, you get grandfathered. So that is readysetcrypto.com slash trial. And the password to get in there is readysetcrypto. Okay, so three offers for you to con consider today. And those are the three links. I'm gonna leave this up and uh, we are right on time here. And I'm gonna switch over and answer your questions. Thank you very much for your patience today and for listening to me. And I'm gonna look for any questions that I can help you with. Okay, good to see, hey, there's Lance out there. Okay, uh, Villan, does this masterclass work for day trading or swing trading? It works for everything. I use this specific methodology for day trading the NASDAQ futures. You can also use this for short-term crypto swing trades short term everything it works on any time frame for any chart it doesn't matter what market that you're using you can use this if and the other great thing about this is if you want to use this for if you want to get into equities and stock trading and open up a robin hood account or something like that you can use the same type of methodology actually you can also use trading view for that as well too it doesn't matter what market that you have Okay, <laughs> Nam is uh, when when you go. There you go. Nice. Okay. Any other questions, guys? I don't want to. Uh, I know that some people it's late at night. I know some people it's early in the morning. For us, it's right smack dab in the middle of the day. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. 
Jeff, will you cover how to keep track of your trades in order to pay taxes in the USA? Um, that is best. Actually, if you read, uh, if you go out to our podcast, go out to our blog that's on our website and podcast number one covers that topic in, in detail because I did interview an accountant on crypto taxes and the suggestions that he made probably is what you want to do. Probably is what you want to do. If taxes is what you care about, listen to that podcast number one. James, are entries and exits covered? Well, entries and exits, basically, this is more of an analysis class. I mean, I can show you some very simple entries and exits. I go into much more in depth into short term trading strategies. That is a separate class, which is all about strategies, entries and exits. But the one my favorite type of trade is what I call a fixed risk trade. So therefore, what you do is you define the stop on it based on the amount of capital that you put into the trade. And of course, that's going to be something small, like maybe half a percent or 1%, something like that. So if it doesn't immediately work out, I mean, typically what I'll do is I'll look for maybe 100% return on that and or a projection of where I think the price will go to based on the pattern that it's in. But if it doesn't immediately work out, I can just hang on to it, right? There's no penalty to just holding on to it because I fixed my risk, I can just ignore it. It's, it's what I call a Viking funeral, right? You set that boat on fire. As soon as you put the position in board, you set it on fire, push it off from the shore and assume that you'll never see it again. So I've already written off the risk on the trade from the very beginning. So that's something you might wanna consider. Yeah, I don't cover taxes in this course. Uh, taxes is something separate because it's gonna be different in every country. So again, if you wanna know more about at least taxes in the United States, listen to podcast number one on Ready, Set, Crypto, uh, which is available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, whatever you wanna find. Childish wisdom. Um, when you see the overall trend descending, coming to an end, should you just hold? No, no, no. That goes back to rule number one of risk management, which is that you should have an exit defined before you enter the position. So this is what I see. Again, this is the number one thing I see with retail traders that screws up their accounts is that they enter something assuming that they're going to win. They don't know when they're going to exit if it is a winning trade. And they don't know what they're going to exit if it's a losing trade. So it's easiest if you define it at the very beginning before you enter the trade. Thank you very much, Nem. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll take one more question. Now we're getting silly. We're getting silly in the room now. Stop that. Uh, let's see, Igor, or is it Igor? Uh, is it works for stock and options as well? Of course, yes. This is where I originally cut my teeth on this several years ago, this methodology in stock and options. Really, you're using it on the underlying instrument of the option, which is the stock itself, not really using this on the options, right? But this works equally well in crypto or anything else that I've applied it to because it, it's based on price. You can never go wrong if you base a strategy on what price is doing. Never, never go wrong with that, okay? Don't be afraid to do the hard things. Uh, Des, can you set a stop loss as well as take profit on Binance for the same amount? Does anyone know? I prefer not to use stop losses, Des, because you'll get stop runs on things, especially if something is fairly illiquid, you'll see middle of the night stop runs on stuff. I prefer that you not do that. I would prefer that you set the risk on the trade based on the amount of capital that you place into it. How long will the coaching class organize Europe times? I don't know. What I'm gonna do is once I get a quorum, once I get critical mass into the class, and this will probably be sometime next week, so I'm assuming that probably by mid mid next week, we'll have a coaching class set up. 
I'm going to reach out to everybody and find out what time works for them. So um, it's there's going to be no one time that works for everybody. And we'll just have to, we may have to rotate them around, you know, one for the Aussies, one for the States, one for Europe, you know, pack room, things like that. We may have to rotate them around. Uh, of course, they will all be archived. If you can't make it there, you can always submit questions into me uh, prior to the session, and I will cover that during the session. So you don't necessarily have to be there to gain benefit from it. Okay, guys, thanks, everybody. We, uh, we're now running a little long here, so I wanted to thank you guys for attending today. Want to see you in the class. Hope to see you online. Make sure you get in by this weekend. Don't pay retail. Never pay retail in trading or for classes. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. We'll see you soon. So I